The mighty Snotius I arose from his slumber to survey his domain. The great empire of Snotopia continued to grow, and it stretched all the way from the mushroom patch to the great river and its vicious hungry monsters. As the snot boss left his burrow, he emerged to see a fresh crop of new snots and squigs to add to his mighty, all-conquering army. If Snotius could count that high, he would know that he now had thirteen snots strong to do his bidding. The jobs that needed to be done were still the same. New burrows would need to be dug out for the new snots. Water still needed to be gathered. The squigs and shrooms still needed to be tended, and there needed to be snotlings assigned to explore the area and claim new territory for the glory of Snotopia. Snotius divided the work evenly with three snots for each group, and he was left with one extra. He assigned the extra snotling to construction. Maybe they could get the burrows dug extra fast, and then they could build other stuff too. Snotius also had a plan for Skull Bash. The lumpy-headed snot that Snotius had clobbered for mucking about and not building proper stuff. He definitely didn't want that troublesome snot digging burrows. So, he sent him off to go get water. And he deliberately did not warn Skullbash of the big and nasty monsters that lived in the river. Hopefully, that would be the end of the problem. Snotius himself joined the exploring group. A great conqueror like him should be at the head of the vanguard. So the great snot boss assembled his forces. Three other snots and himself set out to expand Snotopia. Snotius headed to the northwest of the village to see what he could see. The snot boss marched out in front with his bone club and his skull hat resting proudly on his head. After a while, Snotius ordered that one of the other snots climb a tree nearby to see if there was anything interesting in the area. Maybe some new enemies, or fresh things to loot. The snot seemed hesitant to climb the tall thing, but Snotius bullied and smacked around the smaller snotlings until one of them started to climb. This one had longer arms than the others, and was actually quite able to scramble up the tree with no problem. Snotius decided that he should be called Tree Climber. What do you see, Tree Climber? Oh, is that me name? Ah, oh, I ain't never had a name before. Shut it! Tell me what you see. Um, oh, there's this weird place. Uh, there ain't no trees and everything around it all brown and dead. It looks like uh, there's piles of dirt everywhere. And I see yo's all round. Snotius decided it would be best to investigate this holy place. The snot boss and his three compatriots marched to the edge of the forest and scouted the place out. Suddenly, there was movement. From out of one of the holes, a weird bug thing emerged. It was about as long as a snotling was tall. It had a shiny carapace and two big chompy mandibles. A few others emerged as well. Some were carrying hunks of earth or rocks which they dumped outside of the hole. Others left the nest, probably to do the same sort of thing that Snotius was doing right now. But Snotius realized that these weird bug things were... Well, they were gits! A threat to Snotopia! He needed to teach them a lesson. Snotius gathered Tree Climber and the other snots and organized an ambush. As one of the bugs emerged from the nest, Snotius watched it as it headed towards the edge of the woods. He and the lads were ready for it. As the strange bug entered the woods, it walked along a well-worn path that its sisters had trod many times before. However, something was different. 
Something didn't smell right. The bug paused, and its antenna scanned the air, trying to identify the strange new smell. At that moment, the snotlings sprang out and began trying to clobber the beast with their sticks and Snottius with his bone club. To Snottius' surprise, this creature was much hardier than the puke birds he fought before. Its hard carapace seemed to absorb a great deal of punishment. The creature let out a series of hisses and clicks. <sighs> before lunging at one of the snots, its powerful mandibles slicing right through the legs of one of the snotlings, snipping it clean off. Snottius realized the danger of this creature and knew he needed to dispose of it quickly. The snot boss clobbered it again and again in the head, aiming for its soft eyes. The head seemed to be more vulnerable than the rest of its armored body, and the repeated blows eventually crushed the head of the creature. With the bug dead, Snotius ordered one of the snots to help out the one-legged snotling to make it back to camp. The great warlord would need to figure out what to do with him. Maybe he could have a pegleg to help him get around. Pegleg! That was a fine name for him. Snotius decided that he liked naming things. Though the prospect of naming every single snot and squig was a little much for his tiny brain. With the enemy dispatched, the remaining tiny green skins helped Snotius carry the carcass of the bug back to base. When Snotius returned with his prize, he was shocked. Not only had the burrows been constructed, but the extra builder helped the construction snotlings make a small wall that encompassed the great capital city of Snotopia. Snotantinopolis. The fungus farmers were making good progress, and three more snotlings had sprung up, putting the tribe's numbers up to sixteen. Again, not that Snotius could count that high. The snotlings that had been sent off to get water, well, unfortunately, they all came back in one piece with the water. Skullbash seemed to be staring at Snotius with more hatred in his eyes than usual. But Snotius didn't worry too much about it. There were more important things to do. He had plans for the bug carcass that he had dragged back. The bug's armor was so strong that he wanted that strength for himself. He wanted to be a dead odd snot boss. Snotius began to try to rip apart the carcass with his bare hands and scoop out the innards to hollow it out, but the joints were just too tough. As Pegleg couldn't do much else at the moment, Snotius enlisted him to help gut the bug. After some squabbling and some thinking and some squabbling again, the two managed to find a sharp rock that would help them separate flesh from shell. It took a little while but eventually the bug guts were removed and were handed off to the fungus farmers to see if they could cook something tasty from them. Snotius himself was left with the hollow shell of the bug, which he climbed into to make himself a nice breastplate. Even the hollow bug leg segments could slide over his slender arms and legs, but the true prize of the hall were the sharp mandibles that could cut through peg legs so easily. Snotius claimed one mandible for himself to use as his new weapon, and gave the other to Tree Climber as a reward for spotting the bugs to begin with. When the work was finished for the day, Snotius surveyed Snotantinople's progress. The wall was complete, they had plenty of water, Snotius now had a shiny suit of armor. The squig farm was producing more food, and if the snotlings could figure out a way to reliably hunt the bugs, new armor could become available for more snotlings. The fungus farmers were also handling a fairly large volume of squig dung, which was quickly being moved to the big pile at the center of Snotantinople. However, they realized they needed to be careful not to store the dung too close to the fire because it turned out that squig dung was quite combustible. As the sun began to set, 
Snotius's ears perked up. He began to hear a familiar sound. He gazed out over the walls, and he saw eight of the bug things skittering towards his great capital. Snot Antinopolis had stood for nearly three thousand minutes, and it was not about to fall today. Unfortunately for Snotius, when he ambushed the lone insect, it released a warning pheromone that attracted the other bugs to its position and warned them of danger. When the snotlings hauled the carcass back to Snot Antinopolis, the scent trail led the other bugs right back to the ancient bastion of Snotlingdom. Wah! Snotius raised his looted mandible above his head, and his cry rallied the snots to the wall. Snots swarmed to their position. Snotius regretted that they did not yet have attack squigs, which would have made the defense much easier. He saw how tough these creatures could be. The snotlings would have to use their numerical superiority to their advantage. As the bugs advanced, a hail of stones fell among them from the ramparts of Snotantinople. Most of them bounced off their thick hides, but a few found their mark, dashing into their vulnerable heads. It was not long before the bugs were effortlessly scaling the immense walls and bringing their powerful jaws to bear on the relatively weak snotlings. A melee ensued, where Snotius dove into battle, using his sharp mandible to pierce the thick hides of these creatures. The snot boss also took the opportunity to, of course, kick Skullbash towards one of the vicious creatures, hoping to finally be rid of the rival. But Skullbash refused to die, neatly dodging out of the reach of the snapping jaws of the bugs. The snotlings were beginning to suffer real casualties as the bugs cut through them like butter. The snots began to fall away from the wall, panicking a bit as their cowardly nature began to take over. But Snotius had an idea. The squig dung! The squig dung that was flammable! Poop! Poop! Light the squig poop on fire! Drive them back, boys! The snotlings grabbed the two-pronged sticks that the fungus farmers had been using to scoop then dump the squig droppings. They scooped the poop, dunking it into the flames of the great fire at the heart of Snotantinople. They used the sticks to fling the flaming dung into their enemies, spattering across their shells and sending the burning scat everywhere. With the bugs stopping their advance to scratch and clean themselves from the burning filth that seared them, the snotling surged forward again, driving the enemy back to the walls. When all the dust was settled, all eight bugs were dead along with the bodies of six semi-brave snotlings. The day was won. Chants of Snotius! 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 could be heard echoing from every green throat as every citizen of Snot Antinople cheered. Except for Skullbasher, who still eyed Snotius with envy hatred and contempt. But he would bide his time for now. Snotius could not help but notice that Skullbasher was getting awfully big for a snotling, starting to get close to Snotius's own rather impressive size. But that was a problem for another time. At the moment, the snotlings had eight new sets of armor, and enough mandibles to arm everyone with better weapons. Snotantinople, and the empire of Snotopia had never been stronger. But clouds were beginning to gather on the glorious reign of Snotius I. No man do they call me, my mother and my father, and all my comrades as well. 
Thank you all for listening to this week's episode of Growing the Tribe. If you enjoyed what you heard, I encourage you to like and comment as that will help ensure that the glory of Snotopia will never fade. If you are new to the channel, I encourage you to subscribe so that you can hear more tales featuring flaming poop. And if you have no idea what's going on, you can also click on the playlist that should be appearing on screen now so you can hear the tale of Snotius I from the beginning. If you wish to support this channel, you can join us on Patreon for exclusive content as well as your name added to my end cards. You can also donate via PayPal if you prefer. Thank you all again for listening. No Man Out.